I find it interesting that Albert Einstein's name has come to be used as both a compliment and an insult. So you probably have heard of the phrase, great job, Einstein. Now, of course, that can have two very different meanings. And so what we're going to do together today is we're going to discover whether or not this phrase, when applied to the two of us, is it a compliment or is it more of an insult? Okay, so for this, what we need is we need 16 random cards, okay? And the spectator, you as the spectator are free to choose those. So any 16 cards whatsoever, okay? Just gather these up if I can, okay? So if you were here, I'd have you actually choose these. You really can. So maybe we'll get rid of top few. So one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and the last one from the bottom, 16. And then you are free to mix these as much as you would like, okay? Once you're confident the cards are sufficiently mixed, go ahead and gather them up and then divide these 16 cards into two smaller piles of whatever size you would like, okay? So maybe I'll just break off a certain number here and another number here. And those are truly random divisions that you can choose. And then I have you hand me the larger of the two piles. Now it might be hard for you to tell, but uh, I think the one on the right, the one on the right is larger. I don't know if you can see that, okay? And then I show you the bottom card without me looking at it, okay? So you need to remember the identity of that card whatever it is, okay? And then you set it back down, okay? Very good. Now we'll slide these out of the way just for a moment. Now what we're going to do for this little test is we're going to spell out great job, Einstein, okay? And we'll use the cards to help us with that. And in particular, for each letter in this phrase, we're going to move a card from the top to the bottom, okay? So great, G, R, E, a T job J O B Einstein E I N S T E I N okay and then we're going to just do one more randomization element we're going to use what some Einsteins claim is the Austrian deal and how that works is the top go top card goes down under, down, 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 under, down. Last one goes on top. Okay, very good. Now, the smaller of the two piles that you freely chose will come into play. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to count how many cards you actually designated for the smaller of the two piles. It looks like it's six, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to count off six cards from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Set those over here. And then what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and just kind of give these a good old mix so that no one knows where anything is, okay? Like we can even mix them a little bit more if you would like. And maybe even a little bit more still. <laughs> it really is your choice. Okay, very good. And then at this point, I'm going to set out the cards on the table, kind of in a random fashion here, okay? Like that. And then I need you, oh, they're going off the camera. I apologize for that. There we go. <laughs> um, I need you to... Um, Put your fingers on two of the cards and I'll remove one of the cards that you have one of your fingers on. So uh, let's say you put your fingers right here. That's fine. I'll maybe remove this one. Now I'm free to put my fingers uh, anywhere. Maybe I'll put it right here. And then you ask for this one to be removed. And then maybe you put your fingers like right there. And I remove, let's say this one. And then I put my fingers right here and you remove maybe the bottom one, and then you put your fingers right here, and maybe I'll remove the one on the left. Okay, so after that pretty convoluted 
but random process, what has the universe communicated to us? Are we working together real Einsteins or are we great job Einsteins? Okay, well, let's see what card we ended with. Does that happen to be the card that you saw? And if all was done correctly, that should be the card that you saw. And I'm confident that it is because this process <laughs> works, okay? Okay, now if for whatever reason, well, the spec, in some ways, I guess the spec, I was gonna say, what, what do you do if the spectator lies? Well, telling the truth here and regarding finding their card is actually a good reflection on both of us here. It proves that the most complimentary connotation of Einstein applies to both of us. Whereas if this had not been their card, then we both failed. And the more pejorative meaning of great job Einsteins would apply to us. Okay, well anyway, that's a fun little effect. Uh, it will always work for you. So let's just kind of run through some of it, uh, maybe explain some of it. Okay, so you really do just need uh, 16 random cards. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Uh, now, 16 is an important number. It does end up being uh, one of the keys to making this work. It's a power of 2. It's 2 to the 4th. And if you've heard of the lone survivor principle relative to the down under deal, um, you'll know that powers of two end up being nice numbers to work with when performing this down under deal. Okay, so I have the spectator freely divide the packet into any two piles of whatever size. They can be equal size. Any two pile sizes will work just fine. Now, it is important to know which one's bigger. Okay, and this one appears to be bigger, and the spectator can count that and, and hide that information from you if they would like, okay? And then they hand you the larger of the two, then you show them the bottom card. That is the card they need to remember, okay? So the four of diamonds, okay? Now that's set down here. Okay, now what we did was we did this kind of tuck under deal, where for each letter in this phrase, we moved a card from the top to the bottom. Well, if you count, uh, throw out the exclamation mark, if you count the number of letters in this phrase, it's 16. And that's essential for all of this, for all of the mathematics to work, okay? So this just happens to have 16 letters in the phrase. So what you do is, it ends up being, let me just give you the mathematical result. For any packet of 8 to 16 cards, and that's why I took the larger of the two here. It's guaranteed that the larger of the two piles, when it's divided from the 16, will have at least 8, right? 8 will be the smallest of the larger of the two. <laughs> They'd have to be equal. So I'm guaranteed to have 8 or more up to 16 cards. Well, it ends up that if you have between eight and 16 cards and you move the top card to the bottom and you do that for you know 16 positions, so you just spell out this phrase, whatever the bottom card is, it positions that card in what's called the lone survivor position for the down under deal that we'll perform in just a second, okay? So this spelling out of this phrase is essential to get this one in the right placement in this packet of cards here, okay? And this can all be mathematically verified and has, okay? So if we just, I'll just move 16, 16 letters here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now let me just show you where the four of diamonds is. Okay, just so you know. So for a packet of nine cards, which is what we have here, the lone survivor position for nine cards relative to the down under deal is the second position from the top. Meaning now when we go to do this down, under, down, under, down, under, it's guaranteed to finish with this one on top. 
Okay, so that's like the next little secret. Okay, and we'll see that right now. So let me just slide these over. Okay, and then I joked about the fact that some Einsteins, it was meant to be kind of a silly insult, I guess. Some Einsteins believe the following dealing to be the Austrian dealing. Well, that's completely made up. Technically, the dealing that we're doing is really called the Australian down under, not the Austrian <laughs> dealing. Okay, but anyway, so it's a down, under, 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 down. Last one goes on top. So what I'm claiming is the card that you saw at the bottom of the packet will now have risen to the top. Okay. And that's all guaranteed because there's 16 letters here. And when you're working with between eight and 16 cards, the bottom card of that packet, when you do this tuck under, you do it 16 times, it moves that original bottom card to the lone survivor position so that the down under deal will bring that one to the top. Okay, hope that's not too much to take in. So the key is when I was done with the down under, I knew, I knew that whatever your card was, it's on top. Okay, I don't know what it is technically, right? In the original performance, I never saw your card. And I'm actually just praying to high heaven that I didn't make a mistake and that the two of uh, spades or whatever it was that we thought it was, was correct. I'll find out after the recording. Um, but your card should be right here. Okay. Well, what did I do? I then brought in the number of cards in the smaller of the two piles that you created. Well, in some ways, this is all a ruse to mystify the whole process because you're thinking, wow, I freely, I freely chose how many cards to use in the bigger one as well as the smaller one. And now he's using the information in, in the number of cards in my smaller pile to perform this uh, you know, surprising outcome. We'll, we'll see if it is, but that's what he's doing. So there's seven. Okay, there's seven cards here. Okay, and so now you kind of, you're claiming that that's a significant number when in fact it's not. But so now you just count off, remember there are cards on top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Set the rest of the cards aside, you don't need them. Now, since the card was on top, it's now on bottom. Okay, so I know where it is, okay? And then from there, I did some false mixing. Uh, the Klondike Shuffle, this is where you take the top and bottom card off as one. The bottom card is a fixed point. It doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. So you can do that till the cows come home and that bottom card stays where it is. Um, I think I did some left, right dealing as well. All you have to do here is just keep track of where the last card goes. There it is. There's the last card. So maybe I'll put them over like that. See, I'm freely, I'm kind of choosing how to do this, right? I know it's over here now. Did you catch that? Okay. And so maybe I'll put these over here like that. Now, you can have it at the bottom if you like, and just remember that it's at the bottom, or you can bring it to the top, I guess, again. Um, but, I, but I believe I had it at the bottom, okay? As it was when I first dealt out the, in this case, the seven cards that they had in the smaller of the two piles. And so at this point, you just deal them out supposedly randomly, but you're just keeping an eye on where you put that final card, okay? So if you want to just put it in a place where you'll kind of remember where it is, um, yeah, if you need to, um, which is something I did, but you wouldn't have to, I kind of put it at a funny angle or wh wherever you want to put it. Some people put it like right in front of them. But I know this is your card, okay? And to finish it then, you use the magician's force. And so how this works is, if there's an even number of cards, which was the case in the original performance, there was an even number, you have the spectator go first. If there's an odd number of cards, then you as the performer go first. Well, how do you remember that? Well, I just think of a silly mnemonic. I think of myself as odd, you know, just think of something, I'm a weird person. So, 
if it's an odd number, I go first. Okay, so, uh, so just come up with some way to remember that even is tied to the spectator going first, and if it's an odd number of cards, you go first. Okay, so in this case, I would go first, right? Because there's an odd number, there's seven. So what I do is I just put my fingers on two cards that I don't care if both of them, either one gets taken. Spectator takes that one. Now the spectator's free to put their fingers anywhere, and it actually doesn't matter where they put them. Like if they put them right here, well, you want that one, so you discard this one. Now it's your turn. Just put your fingers on cards that you don't care about. Maybe they'll take this one. They'll put their fingers maybe like on these two. That's fine. I'll get rid of this one. Now it's my turn. Now you have to be sure, you know, put your finger, don't put your finger on this one. <laughs> put your finger on these last two that you don't care which one they take. Maybe they take this one. And then technically their fingers would go here. You have the final choice of getting rid of the one you don't want. Okay. And then at this point, you're guaranteed to finish with the very card that they saw at the bottom of that larger packet that came from the packet of 16. Okay, well, anyway, this is a fun effect. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.